The rhinoceros is one of Africa's iconic animals, but unfortunately a dramatic surge in poaching is pushing it towards extinction. In the last major rhino population in South Africa, more than 200 animals have been killed already this year, mainly for their horns. So authorities are pursuing a drastic remedy, dehorning rhinos before they can be poached. African governments are even considering legalising the trade in rhino horn, but it's an idea that inflames passions, as Africa correspondent Ginny Stein reports. <laughs> If you can't beat the poachers, some say join them. Second from the left, we can do it. She's an adult. Yeah. That's, I'll make a dart for an adult and a two. Wildlife vet Martine van Zell Longhart is getting ready to take down a rhino. Okay, so now we're going to dart the one with the longhorn. At this private game farm, rhinos are distinguishable by what's missing. Their horns are chopped off and trimmed when they grow back. The horning is the same as clipping your nail or clipping the hoof of a horse. As long as you don't go in the tissue, it's not invasive for the animal. First step in the process is to anaesthetize the animal. One drop can kill a human. So we have to be very careful when we make a dart and also we're dealing with the dart after darting. They then blindfold the animal to calm it before measuring the horn to ensure they don't remove too much. Then after cutting off the horn, a quick jab revives the rhino. A conservation success story, South Africa is home to 80% of the world's dwindling population of rhinos. They're all numbered. Um, 49 is lucky. Uh, she's the one who always looks pregnant, even when she's got a small calf still. At Morrisdale Game Farm, John Hume breeds rhinos. He has the largest herd in the country, mainly white rhinos, but also their more aggressive cousins, the black rhino. Blacks are insecure and they take it out on you. Whites are secure and placid and basically are at ease in their skin. So they're really not dangerous animals. They, uh, they are... Very, very user friendly. But such is the demand for rhino horn that even his dehorned rhinos have been killed. Even a little bit of horn is worth a lot. It just tells us that the horn is now worth so much that my rhinos are worth being killed for much less horn. <laughs> In 2007, 13 animals were poached in South Africa. Last year, the number hit 448. More than 200 have been killed this year alone. Increasing demand from Asia, where rhino horn is valued for its status and perceived curative powers as behind the massive increase. The warnings are there that if current trends continue, deaths will outstrip births. The first step towards the potential end of a species. With hundreds already killed this year, the relentless slaughter of Africa's last remaining rhino population appears unstoppable. Those pushing to legalise trade in rhino horn say it may be the only way to stop the animal being pushed to extinction. At South Africa's main veterinary genetics testing lab in Pretoria, a massive database is being collated from samples of rhinos across southern Africa. Traceability of both the animal and its horn are vital if trade in rhino horn is ever to be legalised. At this stage, in terms of individual animals, we have about 5,500 on the database. That includes poach cases, so from carcasses from animals, as well as from actual live routine animals that have been done during dehorning and also for routine identification. 
but there's passionate opposition to dehorning. Having seen it done and just seen basically the majesty of that animal taken away, it affected me psychologically. So, um, you know, how does the the baby then come back and see its mom with no horns? How do they choose mates? I think there's so much we don't understand, and it is an intervention that's drastic, preventative, trying to stop the animals being poached. Moving from harvesting horn to legalising its trade is a massive leap that no government has yet been prepared to make. When an animal is currently worth more dead than alive, there has to be some incentive to ensure its survival. Dr Corbus de Toit has been campaigning to save the rhino for more than 20 years. People get confused with ivory and the rhino. You must kill an elephant for his ivory. You don't kill a rhino for its horn. And it's not compulsory to sell the horn, but there must be for people that has got huge investments in the private sector to protect the animals. There must be a way to get the money back. For John Hume, who's invested a small fortune in building up his rhino stock, he makes no bones about what he calls his passion and that he advocates legalising trade. We have to approach a capitalistic win-win situation where we sustainably get a return from our rhinos, either from tourism or from breeding or from farming. You will never get anybody to breed rhinos unless they can sustainably utilise the horn because if they can't sustainably utilise the horn, they will not make any money out. He knows rhinos may not add to his wealth in his lifetime, but it will to his heirs no matter what. My investment advisor says I shouldn't bother about selling the horn because the, the price is going up so astronomically and if they go extinct, the price of my horn will go up even more astronomically. The South African government, which is sitting on its own massive stockpile of ivory and rhino horns, has commissioned a study on legalising trade. It will help it decide whether to support such a move. Well, the study is based on the national legalisation of the trade. So it's still not addressing the international legalisation. Um, but it, it will inform, the, the results of that study will hopefully inform us better about some of the international issues should trade be considered. There's no doubt about it, there will still be poaching. But we are supplying those floodgates anyway, all from dead rhinos. You are supplying that market. Yes, we don't know how big it is because we drove it underground. So we can't judge how big it is, but you are supplying it from dead rhinos. Now, that to me makes no sense at all. The truth is, no one knows what legalising the trade in horns would mean for the fate of the rhino. But if nothing is done, they face extinction.